Hi, my name's Fraser, and today I'll be talking about the lupus dingo, or dingo, which was Australia's first introduced species and can be found in just about every habitat and state in Australia, except for Tasmania. The dingo is Australia's largest terrestrial carnival, but occasionally eats plants and nuts. A 2011 study discovered that the mitochondrial DNA of the dingo indicates an introduction through mainland Southeast Asia. Archaeological evidence suggests that dingoes have been present on Australian soil for at least 3,500 years, long enough to establish themselves as apex predators alongside the thylacine, which went extinct in the 1930s. They also live to about 10 years of age, but can live up to 18 in captivity. <laughs> dingoes were companions to women in traditional Aboriginal societies. They were carried around their waist, kind of like a backpack to provide warmth in the winter and also protection. They were also used to help them hunt. Unfortunately, this tradition was discontinued as the colonization of Australia led to the introduction and spread of livestock across the country and the subsequent eradication of dingoes because they used to hunt livestock. It became far too dangerous to keep the species around the Aboriginal campsite. They're intelligent, resourceful, but also very opportunistic predators. While they mostly feed on small native animals, they have been known to attack humans, although quite rarely. Nevertheless, humans should take caution around dingoes, as most injuries are a result of trying to feed or leaving food around the species. This encourages them to make the association between food and humans, which is not good. But it's important for us to know the dangers of dingoes and understand why it's important to keep our distance. However, due to the history of dingo and Aboriginal companionship, we've got a question why this can't be anymore. It's believed that the aggression and violence towards humans is a result of hundreds of years of separation. Fraser Island, located on the southeast coast of Queensland, is home to over 150 dingoes. In order to conserve and manage the risks associated, the islands focused on naturalising the species by separating the dingoes from humans and the food that they bring. But still, over 400,000 people visit Fraser Island every year, probably hoping to see dingoes, making it pretty hard to achieve total separation. Domestications a process that takes many generations and while dingoes can be tamed in some rare circumstances, unpermitted ownership is still illegal in Tassie, South Australia and Queensland. Northern Territory, Victoria, WA and ACT as well as zoos and wildlife parks across the country can own dingoes with a permit, but New South Wales is the only state where you can keep a dingo without a permit. Hmm. Humans should reject exploitation and be concerned about decreasing wild animal suffering. Well, which refers to harm inflicted on animals as sentient individuals. According to utilitarianism, we should also prepare for future generations of dingoes, whether this is environmentally by increasing our pro-environmental activity, which can have long lasting effects, or if it's by addressing interbreeding issues at the moment to avoid potential future extinction. Going off the issue of interbreeding, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature has listed the species as vulnerable. This is largely a result of interbreeding with wild dogs. This is a growing issue because as wild dingoes are forced into more urban areas they are more likely to interbreed, resulting in canid hybrids that cannot be classified as pure dingo. But although the species is listed as vulnerable, it's unlikely to go extinct due to current conservation programs. The best thing we can do to help to protect this species is to give them space and look after the environment that we live in. Thank you.